So I accidentally locked myself out of my patio, and in coming outside to get around, I found this little bunny! Hello! I've already started editing the other video, and I decided that I liked the lighting here better, so I am redoing all of it. <laughs> Hello Internet, it's Ariella. I'm going to be a medical student starting this August and I wanted to make a video on my MCAT tips and tricks. So I'm going to be breaking this video down into five different parts. The first section is going to be what my scores were. The second section is going to be general information that you need to know regardless of how you decide to prepare. The third section is going to be preparing without a prep course. The fourth section is going to be what I experienced during my prep course. And then the last section is going to be smaller tips and tricks to help you be successful on MCAT day. And one thing I want to get out of the way really quickly is that I'm not going to be going over the general information that you can find on the website. I'm just going to be talking about things that helped me when I took the MCAT. So the first time I took the MCAT was in August of 2017. Um, like I said in my previous video, I prepared using the Kaplan books and I scored a, which is 48th percentile. So obviously not very good. And I was willing to put in the work to improve. So I ended up taking the MCAT again in May of 2018. And that time I used Kaplan and other online resources that I found and I scored a 504, which is 61st percentile and I wanted to improve further so I ended up taking a Princeton review course online and I took the MCAT my final time in August of 2018 and I scored a 507 which is 70th percentile. So obviously I'm not the perfect MCAT score, 100th percentile student, but I did improve my score a lot and I want to go over what I did to improve that score, but also what I could have done even more to improve that score. So in general, I recommend you make a schedule. Make sure you schedule time for practice tests and practice questions. Thank you to my mom for telling me that I needed to make a schedule and I'm sorry for not listening to you for several, several months. <laughs> if you like planning, I would schedule out by day or by hour. So for example, I would schedule out two hours in the morning for reading, two hours for practice problems based on that reading, an hour break for lunch, and then two more hours reading and two additional hours practice questions on that reading. And then I would schedule in my tests for whatever free day I had during the week because you can't really schedule anything else on the day that you're scheduling to take a eight hour practice test. If nothing else, do as many practice exams as you possibly can because this is the best way to improve your score. Unfortunately, courses like Princeton Review and Kaplan in person or online are extremely expensive and they are by no means necessary to do well on the MCAT. I just wanted that extra push and because I was able to, I took advantage of this resource and it helped me. But if you choose not to do an online course, I do still have some recommendations on things you should use. So I recommend buying at least the book set, if you can, for either Kaplan or Princeton Review. I tended to like Princeton Review a little bit better, although I can't really say why. I just found that the passages were a little bit less boring for me to read, so I was able to focus a little bit better. Use as many free problems as you can find online once you've exhausted the problems in your book. I recommend considering buying additional practice tests if you can. I think with my Kaplan book, set I received two or three practice tests for free well not for free but in the cost of the the book set and I would probably recommend taking about seven or eight for myself it kind of depends on the kind of student you are and how comfortable you are with the material I ended up taking five to six but I would have liked to take one or two more just to really solidify myself you won't get that many with the book set that I bought 
If you do decide to take a Kaplan or Princeton review course, the book set is usually included and you get, I think I had something like 14 practice tests. I don't know. You definitely get more than 10. And so that's a more comfortable range for those practice tests for me. Princeton Review offers courses in person and online, and when considering which one you should take, I would take into account the kind of learning style that you're comfortable with. I'm much more comfortable in a classroom, and I did actually sign up for the in-person course, but because not enough people signed up, it ended up getting canceled and I had to sign up for online. Princeton Review has a few different types of courses. I know they have a strategy course, which is geared toward people who are comfortable with the material that's gonna be on the MCAT, but not necessarily comfortable with the strategy of taking the test. So the types of questions and the types of answers that you should be looking out for. The MCAT has different style questions, and if you know the type of question it is beforehand, you can kind of approach the answer a little bit better. I ended up taking the ultimate course, which includes both strategy and material, and that's because my senior year of college, I took mostly biology electives instead of those pre-med prerequisites, so I was a little bit rusty on the material. If you decide to sign up for the MCAT Ultimate course, do not forget to sign up for the Psychology Sociology section because for some reason that section is scheduled separately than the other sections of the MCAT. The biggest hurdle I ran into with Princeton Review, and I talked about this a little bit in the last video, but um, I chose a timeline that was very short, and I would not recommend this timeline basically to anyone, and this is why. So my course ran from August 1st to August 23rd, and I took the MCAT on August 31st. So the first problem with that is that when you're taking this course, the instructors are assigning homework, they're assigning practice tests, so they can gauge a better idea of how you're doing with the material. Unfortunately, because my course was only 23 days or basically a month long, I had eight hour days every day, except Saturday I had a three hour course and Sunday I had off. So I essentially had no time to do the supplemental materials and I barely had any time to do the practice tests. And it is so difficult to motivate yourself to do an eight hour long practice test when you know you have an entire week of eight hour long classes coming up. So for these reasons, I probably would not recommend this shorter course. They do offer longer courses. However, if for some reason you need to take the shorter course because of your schedule or because your MCAT is soon, I would recommend taking the course and giving yourself at least one month between the end of the course and the date of your MCAT. So I only had one week and again, it kind of doesn't really give you a lot of time to do extra practice tests. And I didn't want to become burnt out by the time I got to the exam, but I wanted to continue practicing. So if you give yourself a month in between the end of the course and the start of your exam, you'll have plenty of time to do extra practice tests while also having free time in between. All right. So some final tips and tricks for the MCAT to just make your experience on MCAT day a little bit better. Try to set up your practice testing environment to one that is similar to what you're going to experience on the actual MCAT. So obviously you can't get it perfect because you can't go to the testing center ahead of time. But what I did is I scheduled out a, what's it called? A private room in the library for eight hours and I would sit down take my test, take the same allotted breaks that they recommended you take, and I would leave my phone and things in the car. And I know this is a huge pain <laughs> because nobody wants to take an eight hour test multiple times. But if you simulate this environment, you'll be more prepared on test day to sit down for eight hours because that's really hard. It really sucks to have to just sit for eight hours and think. 
Um, I will say that with the techniques that Princeton Review gave me, I found that I could focus a lot better. Um, and I won't share those techniques here because obviously that's their material and I wouldn't feel comfortable sharing it. But another thing is if you're not taking the full time, unless you're just really, really good at the MCAT, it's likely that you're probably not taking it in a way that's going to set you up for success. So my first time that I took it, I ended up taking five and a half, maybe six hours with all the check-in and check-out and lockers and eating and stuff like that. Um, I didn't really take a lot of my breaks and I kind of sped through the exam as fast as I possibly could. The last time that I took the exam, I took almost the full allotted eight hours. And that's because the techniques that Princeton Review recommended took a little bit longer to do, but were more successful in the long run. Okay, I'm off on a tangent. <laughs> Consider waking up at the time you're going to need to get up on the day of the MCAT for a full week before you actually take the test. So for me, I would wake up at 6 a.m., do my work during the day, and go to bed at 10 p.m. every night. So that way I was acclimatized to this time shift when I took the exam and I was able to focus in the morning when I'm usually not as focused. I also recommend using your normal stress management techniques throughout the process of studying for the MCAT and especially during the later stages of studying. So make sure if you enjoy exercising, you continue to exercise. If you like yoga, do yoga. I would visit animals or go for drives out in the farmland, which was really relaxing. <laughs> um, if you like video games, play video games or make your favorite meal. Those are just some ideas of things that you should continue to do throughout your studying experience because you have to be at least a little bit happy to avoid burning out. Try not to study too hard the day before your test, again, to avoid burnout. If you take an eight hour test the day before your test, you're gonna wake up and not want to take an eight hour test. So I did a little bit of practice materials as well as some like, again, stress management the day before, but I didn't do a full length test and I wouldn't recommend it. On the day of the test, if you are a regular coffee or caffeine drinker, have your regular coffee or caffeine. But if you're not, I would not recommend having it because you'll probably find that you need to use the bathroom a little bit more than you did when you were studying. I feel like everybody says this, but it is so true, especially for me, because I get hungry every like half an hour. So have a breakfast that's really filling and full of healthy proteins and healthy fats. I really like oatmeal with almond butter. That's my recommendation, but have whatever you like to have. Um, something that will keep you full until your first break. Plan something fun for after your exam. The first time I took the exam, I didn't really do this, but the last time I took the exam, I went into it with a much better mental state because I had something to look forward to once it was over. My last tip is to remember why you're here and why you love medicine. And remember that an MCAT score isn't everything on an application and it doesn't define you as a person. Okay, let me know what you guys think of my tips. If you have anything to add, please do. I'm always looking for study management techniques that I can apply to my own studying and not just the MCAT. So if you have anything that you'd like to add, please leave it down below. And if you have any suggestions of things that I should talk about, also leave those down below. And yeah, um, thanks for watching. Bye.